All right, what's up YouTube? Welcome to today's video. My name is Gabe and I'm gonna be talking about this Illustrator feature that I really don't like. And the reason I'm talking about it, perhaps you've seen one of these videos on my Instagram lately, if you follow me on Instagram. If you don't, you're missing out because it's just, it's so great. It's, it's fine, you know. If you wanna follow, check it out. I'll put a link in the bio just so you can see what I'm talking about today. But um, I, I've done these videos, there's two of them, and I use some different ways in Illustrator that I found that are the best way to create symmetry. And a lot of people have kind of come back and said, hey, why don't you use the Illustrator symmetry tools? Like, what, what are you doing? That's kind of crazy. It'd be way simpler if you did it this way. I disagree completely. Um, I think you're wrong. And I'm gonna show you why. So here we've got this fleur -de -lis that I created in, uh, in my video where I talked about how to make a fleur -de -lis. and I'm gonna shrink it down and then I'm gonna put it over here and I'll show you how I did it. Uh, so basically this is my trick. This is the way I do this in Illustrator. So I'll show you first the way that Adobe, the Adobe way and the reason I don't like it. So let's say I'm drawing, oh, there's actually two different ways that people have recommended me do and I'd like, I don't think they work. I think I found the best way. <laughs> might be a little cocky, but I really, I really have like tried to find the best way to do this and I think that I have, uh, I think I found it, so that's why I wanna share it and prove to you guys that I'm right. And obviously this looks a little janky right now. We're gonna fix this. Okay, so that's at least like somewhat passable for the moment. It's not really very pretty, so sorry. Um, also to all of my French viewers, even though I do literally have a French flag in my office, um, you, were, you were discouraged by me because I, I typed fleur de -lis wrong. Well, at first I did type it wrong, but also in Louisiana where I'm from, Fleur de -lis is spelled a little differently. So, uh, okay, I'm gonna show you. What, I'm gonna show you one of the ways. So the first way you can do this is through the um, Illustrator symmetry tools. So object. Wait, where is it? Object. Repeat. Mirror. Okay, yeah. So we can use the mirror effect, which this seems simple, right? Like this seems pretty obvious. Like I just moved this here, but you'll notice something pretty weird about this, right? Like why, when it's set like this, do I only have these parts? Like why is it hiding part of my shape here? Um, like I have to have it right on the dot, which that's actually kind of hard to get it right. Like am I, am I exactly there? So look, actually right now, it's not totally centered because that's my anchor point and then that's my line. So it's, it's kind of hard to actually get it exactly right which I mean, I guess I could just, let's see, does this snap? No, it doesn't. Okay, so here's my problem, ready? So this seems like it could work and everyone's like, just use the Illustrator tools. But look, I love Adobe, but they screwed the pooch on this one. Like this is terrible. So, um, sorry, there's no way to do this without it getting a little clunky. Um, so if I, so say I, I wanna keep drawing, let's say, I'll cut this line. Sorry, I'm just trying to make this easy. Okay. Nope, I have to double click in. So this is another weird thing. Okay, so now I'm, I'm double clicked into this mirror repeat thing you can see up here. Um, if I were to continue to draw using my pen tool, whenever I cross this line, if I cross my line of symmetry, now you can see it's not actually repeating. It's doing these really, really weird things. Um, because essentially what I've found is that with Illustrator, if you're if your uh, design, it, it crosses over to one side, then it only keeps what's on that side. So like, it doesn't allow for you to have things on both sides of the symmetry axis. It only has it on one. So you have to have all of your stuff on the right side. You can't have any of it cross over to the left, which is not a problem with my technique. So that that's one thing. So I, I hope that it makes sense, but, but that's one reason I don't like that. So let's try this again. We're gonna take off the um, repeat. Okay, so other people have said, you know, if I use the transform tool, that's command T, I think. I have some custom shortcuts, that might be one of mine. But anyway, so I can use the transform one and this is sort of what I do, but I have another step that I use. So I make a copy and then I reflect it on the x-axis. Um, right now, it's not reflecting in the right spot because by default, if you look right here, it reflects from the center. So if I try to reflect it from the left, that seems like it would do the trick, right? But here's our problem. So because it's an effect, it's going to keep the effects in mind. And if you don't know what that means, I have my appearance panel over here. And so I have transform and transform is working in conjunction with this stroke, which means the stroke is five pixels. So that means there's 2.5 pixels from the center to this edge right here. And it's keeping those things in mind. This may sound a little mathy to you or whatever, but my point is if I increase my stroke size, look at this, my shape 
actually moves. My lines are moving, which is not what I want. You see that? So, so that's a problem as well, because now I can't have my lines come together. And the reason you want them to come together is once you expand this sucker, um, you want to be able to combine them. Like these lines should be touching so that they can be joined together. Now I have to join it in that way and it's going to kind of ruin my illusion of what I'm going for. So that also doesn't work. Um, I'm going to reset this down a little smaller. Let's go back to five. Um, so those two are the methods that have been recommended to me. People are like, why don't you use this? Like, this is silly. You're wasting your time. You're wrong. I'm going to show you the way that I use it and why it works um, better than both of these other ways. So sorry if you're one of those people that commented that, but I just, you know, as a friend, I want to prove you wrong. So you're not doing it the wrong way. Okay. So here's what I do. So I make a circle, make sure it's perfectly circular. It's not, it can't be an oval. It needs to be a circle. Um, and then I, I, so you can group it first, you can group it after. I'll just group it after for this. And then let's say I also, we'll go ahead and bring over our, our like flirt -a -lee here. Um, and I have to take off my transform effect. Let's delete that. Okay, so I'm gonna get this to where it's lined up in the center right here. And so now if I group these two together and now I do transform and I do the same thing, make a copy and reflect X. Now what I get is that these are perfectly lined up right in the middle. And it doesn't matter if I change my stroke size to a hundred or not, it's going to stay in the exact same place, which is what you need whenever you're creating symmetries, because a lot of times you're going to put it together once you're done. And so the reason this works is because, so I'll show you what happens. I'm going to, if I bring the circle a little smaller, so if it comes in and it goes past the inside, See some weird stuff starts happening here, right? Like we have some strange things going on. Like what's that? So basically, how do I explain this? You're, what the transform option is doing is it's reflecting and it doesn't know where to reflect it from. It's by default gonna reflect it from the center of that group, the center of the section. And so what helps is if you have a circle bigger than everything else, you know exactly where the center is because the circle it contains everything in the art. And so that's why if I were to be drawing in here and I were to do something outside of the circle, it's gonna mess it up. So as long as my circle is bigger than whatever content is within it, it's gonna always make sure that it perfectly aligns things symmetrically. Um, man, I really hope you guys are tracking with this. It's really important. And what I do is I actually like, here's my trick is you can take the stroke off of your circle and then you can click command two, which locks it. So you can't even touch it. You don't even have to worry about it. You can just do your thing right here um, and create your symmetry. So if I click in here and I want to continue my fleur de lis, which this, this is tricky to draw you guys. Like I had to, it took me a few minutes to get the curves just right. It's a little picky. Um, but you see now it's drawing in real time on the other side. And remember the issue that we came across before, which this isn't how you draw literally, but if for any reason I want to, you know, if I wanted to start here and then I wanted to curve up, I'm crossing that line right in the middle that we had problems with before. And it's not giving me issues. Like I can crisscross and go back and forth and left and right. The only drawback for this is that I can only edit the stuff that's on the right. So this stuff I can't click and select because it's just an effect. It's just mirroring it. And so if I click command Y, it shows me my actual lines. That's your outline option. And so that shows we really only have lines happening on the, the right side, but our circle and our effect is just flipping it, which is what we want. Um, so that's the only downside, but honestly, it works a lot better. Um, sorry, let me finish this. I want to actually make my point here and it look nice. Um, but Fleur de Lis, man, are so much harder to draw than you think just because there's like there's definitely some some uh, science to these curves, and it's pretty easy to botch them, um, even using Bezier paths. Let's see. <laughs> so yeah, the proportions can just be a little weird. We'll go down on this guy. Okay, that's that's decent. It's a little fat, which what I could do is I can uh, select it all and just shrink it a little bit. It's not bad. And then I can also bring these down a smidge. Great. This is, this is good enough. And then I'll just draw a rectangle from the center and I will round my corners. Great. Technically this is duplicating it. Like it's making two of them, but for our purposes, that doesn't change anything. Okay. So now we have this flirtily 
the proportions aren't great. Don't judge me. But um, what I can do, I'll duplicate this so we can go back to show you what I'm doing in a minute. But for now, if I click these guys and I do object, expand appearance. Now, when we click command Y, our lines are perfectly aligned. And so now if I want to uh, flip all these to where it's fill, not stroke, it works perfectly. And uh, we can combine it together with our Pathfinder tool and there, boom, you got a fleur de -lis. But if you try to do this with these other options that were recommended to me on Instagram, it will not work as well. Like you will run into issues. So I just want to explain why I do that, but also show you why it's so helpful. I've been using this, to, this trick for literally like I think seven years or something, a long time, because Illustrator did not have any kind of symmetrical options. There's plugins that does it, that, that do it well, but you know, there's no symmetry built in until recently. And I'm, I'm in, I admire their attempts, but I think there's still some weird stuff that they, uh, they have not really figured out. And maybe there's a way in the options to adjust this. Um, let's see. Yeah. Yeah. I looked at it. I couldn't find any way to allow us to keep, uh, both sides of the symmetry active. So I don't know why that is. That's just a really strange deal to me. So what I recommend is, you know, you can go back and watch it if you want, but use my trick with the circle because it's going to make your life a lot easier when you're trying to do symmetry, which I do a fairly often amount of times, uh, in my work. Uh, so that's just my recommendation for you. And to all the naysayers on Instagram, I told you so that's today's video and I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you um you know learned something and if you haven't go ahead and like this video I know that seems like the thing that all youtubers say and I was like I'll never say that but actually you clicking a button which costs you literally nothing helps me so much so if you want to like it that would just be a real big blessing for me um and if you want to subscribe I post new content all the time and you can learn so many things and we'll all just learn together because I'm learning new things each day and uh yeah, so that's today's video. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.